like I never went back for like two months. Wow. And the thing that got me to go back to CrossFit was um, I just kept running mm-hmm. that whole time was uh, the, the owner of the gym like I kept bumping into him oh. and more frequently than not and I was like oh my god this, this is, is so sign. embarrassing yeah. <laughs> like dude like I, I just don't want to go back but I don't want to tell him that and so I was like oh I'm coming in tomorrow like oh god what have I got myself into this is episode number 52 part a with Tia Claire to welcome to pursuing health I'm Julie Fouché, medical student and former CrossFit Games athlete. Here, I bring to you information and inspiration from experts and everyday individuals for how to use lifestyle to maximize health. Thank you so much for joining me. Now let's get started with this week's episode. Hey there, welcome back to Pursuing Health. I'm so excited to share this very insightful two-part episode with you with two-time second fittest woman on earth and 2016 Olympian, Tia Claire Toomey. I've been a big fan of Tia since first meeting her after her 2015 CrossFit Games debut, and we finally had the chance to sit down and catch up at Chris Hinshaw's annual training camp in Cookville, Tennessee, a couple of weeks ago. A little bit of background about Tia, she grew up on a sugarcane farm on the Sunshine Coast of Queensland, Australia, and she had early aspirations for the Olympics as a track and field athlete. Eventually, she had to put that dream aside to focus on her schooling and her work, but it wasn't long before Tia finally discovered CrossFit and a new competitive fire was lit. She burst on the CrossFit Games scene in 2015, earning the title of second fittest woman on earth. She then repeated this feat again in 2016, and only days after that, she represented Australia as the country's only female weightlifter in the Rio Olympic Games. She currently resides in Gladstone, Queensland, Australia, where she owns and runs CrossFit Gladstone alongside her coach and fiance, Shane Orr. In part A of this episode, we talk about everything from her upbringing to deciding to let go of track and field to getting started with CrossFit and then setting a goal for herself to compete in both the CrossFit Games and the Olympics in 2016. Before we get started, I have a few quick reminders. First of all, I'm very excited to announce the launch of a very special program I've been working on with one of my sponsors, Pure Pharma. Together, we've created a subscription program where you can select the products you use on a regular basis and have them automatically shipped to your door at the interval you select. So for example, maybe you want to receive two bottles of fish oil every other month or a container of protein every six weeks. In every shipment, you'll receive a special message from me, and you'll also receive a video message from me every month on a different topic in your inbox. This month, I'm talking about my approach to goal setting. From time to time, I'll also include special offers or discounts to products from some of my other favorite companies. So to get started, visit www.purepharma.com forward slash share forward slash Julie. Once you subscribe, you should receive a message from me in your inbox welcoming you to the program. I hope to see you there. I'd also like to ask that if you're enjoying the podcast, please head over to iTunes to subscribe and consider giving it a rating. I'm also always looking for inspiring stories to share. So if you or someone you know has used lifestyle to overcome a serious health challenge, please send your story to me at info at juliefouché.com and I'll select some to share here on future episodes. To check out my online training programs through Beyond the Whiteboard, visit www.beyondthewhiteboard.com forward slash Julie Fouché. Finally, please remember that although I'm nearing graduation from medical school, this podcast is meant to share the experiences of individuals and does not provide medical advice. So with that, let's get started here with episode 52, part A of Pursuing Health featuring Tia Claire Toomey. Welcome to Pursuing Health. I'm so excited to be here with Tia. Well, do you go by Tia Claire or Tia usually? Um, well, I mean, I guess in competition <laughs> and like when it's kind of real formal, it's Tia Claire, but just Tia. Normally Tia. Yeah. Okay. Well, welcome to Pursuing Health. We're here with Tia Toomey. And 
I'm so excited to finally sit down with you and talk to you about your whole life and experience because it's so fascinating. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm actually, I'm really honored, actually. I'm a bit nervous. My wow. hands are a bit sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be nervous. <laughs> um, but we actually, I think we first met right after the 2015 games yeah. when you, that was your first year, you finished in second yeah. and at the after party. And I remember chatting with you and Danae Brown, I think, yeah. with my sister and just thinking oh my gosh they are the nicest people ever and so it was so great to see you start off with such a bang in CrossFit and then how far you've come even in the next year or so yeah so oh it's um it's definitely been a journey I remember that night so clearly (laughs) too it was so much fun yeah that was it was awesome wasn't it I think on that night like I just obviously was on such a high because um, yeah that wasn't really something that I kind of had pictured (laughs) Yeah. yeah yeah amazing first start at the games but let's go back I want to just start all the way at the beginning because um I know for a lot of your life you were a track and field athlete Mm -hmm. and I think it started relatively young but what were you what were you like what did you do athletically growing up um so basically uh throughout like all my my childhood Mm -hmm. like I was such an active child like my mom and dad that we I actually grew up on a cane farm oh wow like sugar um, cane. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, wow. Uh, and so my my parents were cane cane farmers. Mm-hmm. Um, can't say that I helped out <laughs> at all. Um, but yeah, basically, uh, you know, I was always into doing different types of sports. So mm-hmm. I know it's not very popular over in the states, and a lot of people have probably never heard of it before. But mm-hmm. you know, I played sports like netball. Okay. Um, if they YouTube it, they'll probably you know, figure out what figure it is. Figure out what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I like football. Um, we also played, um, hello. Oh, hi, <laughs> um, uh. we also <laughs> played like, you know, tennis mm-hmm. and, and then, and then the running and, and the running, um, and swimming mm-hmm. that was probably more so through the school. Okay. And then, and that's where, you know, I, I was kind of doing a lot of things competitively, but I, I was quite a competitive person okay. in general, but you know all the all the sporting activities that I was involved in was just really social and kind of I guess it was a way for my parents to keep me out of um you know the, <laughs> out of trouble out of trouble yeah, yeah. and uh, and I also did like surf life saving so like they do this it's, oh, cool. a, it's a great great sport for um kids over in Australia that to do nippers hmm and it's like kind of surf life saving and, you know, like the, the, every Sunday all the parents will get together and uh-huh. like, you know, you're, you're in your different age groups and there's like a big bunch of kids and they're like going out and swimming and oh, they're getting fun. dumped by the waves <laughs> and, you know, getting sand in their pants and, oh, it's crazy. It's it's so much fun and um, I was definitely involved in that for a couple okay. of years as well and, yeah. So very active. Then when did it start turning, you said maybe when you were in school, but when did it start turning competitive or when you thought – Okay, I'm going to start taking this really seriously. Hello. Hi. (laughs) We have all kinds of visitors over here. Um, How are you? So basically, um, I think in grade seven, um, you know, that that was probably my first year that um, I guess uh, one of my – you know, sports teachers was like, you know, you could really go to nationals Mm. for cross country. Okay. Um, And so, like, you know – there, there was def- definitely different stages. You mm-hmm. you go and do your district run, and then you go and do your 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 state run, and then you go to nationals and stuff. Okay. And that's as far as it ever really kind of went. But mm-hmm. that's probably like cross country, and then leading into athletics more into like secondary school. Okay, was definitely uh, where where that kind of that drive for wanting to go to the Olympics kind okay. of originated. And so I always kind of was like when I was young, oh man, like, you know, right now you can't really go any further than nationals and mm-hmm. I'd, I'd been there. So it was kind of like, yeah, I've ticked that off the list. And um, and I guess, you know, like the the big goal for everyone was like, oh yeah, it'd be incredible to go to the Olympics. So I was like, yeah, me too. I, yeah. I want to go there too. That's what so. I want to do. Yeah, so like that was, um, yeah, it kind of started from there. Okay. And was there a certain moment or did you watch the Olympics and think that, okay, I want to be there? Or what What do you think it was that set that seed in your mind? Um, I think it was because like 
I don't think there was any particular moment, but Mm -hmm. I mean, every four years, like the Olympics was always Mm -hmm. on the TV and it was so interesting to see like these athletes, like you don't realize just how much they go through in order to get there right. and, t- and you, you only see like the the lights and the right. you know the podiums how, and the medals yeah and, yeah. and like the <laughs> just like you you only see the stuff that they're being rewarded with right. and like it's incredible and you're like yeah that that's what I want to do yeah but um the rave that that the athletes get and like I guess I think I was a child that always wanted to make my my parents happy mm-hmm. and um and I always wanted to make sure that they were proud of me and mm-hmm. whatever I did and <laughs> I guess when it came to my like work I was like oh god like I don't know what I want to do uh-huh. and um <laughs> I mean, I, I'm. I guess I'm good at some sports, so maybe, maybe I could go down that avenue. Yeah. And instead of disappointing them through, like, you know, <laughs> a career and, and not actually being successful that way, I could probably, you know, go down this avenue of um, of of being sporty and and following, you know, right. that that type of career. Well, following, or, yeah, following what your talents are and what you're <laughs> passionate about. I think yeah. at the end of the day, that's what you have to do. So. And and that's right. And I. I mean, I always wanted to actually be a midwife. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Um, Because I saw that you went, you started nursing school at one point, correct? Yeah. Okay. So, um, like, so you needed a certain OP score, Mm -hmm. which in order to get into that course. Okay. And, um, and I missed out on that, that particular score. So, Mm -hmm. um, I I guess I was trying to go the long way around and, you know, I got into nursing and then. Um, kind of went off there and I deferred from that mm-hmm. um, just because I, I, I guess I wasn't really enjoying it and I wasn't I didn't see the benefit of continuing something okay. that I wasn't enjoying yeah. and I mean before university and, and you know thinking about you know what I what I wanted to do as a, as a career mm-hmm. um, I, I guess I, I realized just how re- really hard it is to get to the Olympics mm-hmm. and when you're young you, you're kind of yeah. like yeah that's awesome but then reality kind of kicks in and you're like wow it's gonna take a lot of time and effort right for track and that's kind of where I lost that like I, I just it's not that I lost the drive but I came to realization of just how hard I needed to work and mm-hmm. um I just I just wasn't good enough mm-hmm. to to be able to follow that path through and uh so and this is what you have some version of college or like after high school that's where you were yeah okay yeah when and, you made and that then decision. that's that's when uh that crossfit came into the picture okay yeah so you decided first it was this the decision okay i'm not going to pursue track anymore yeah um for that olympic dream and then you found crossfit yeah what else kind of went into that decision because obviously you it had been a huge part of your life up yeah. until that point um I, well, I had a about a year off. Okay. Um, well, I think it was r- roughly around about a year because, uh, like, you know, my parents were spending so much money on such a great school. Mm. And I, I guess, you know, at that time I was like, well, I don't want to waste their time and their money that, you know, they're putting in towards my studies and, right. and, and education. So, um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to step back from my schooling and I'm going to try and pursue this, this, you know, nursing career. And, okay. um, and, and yeah, like I, I just didn't want to be distracted. So I kind of eliminated all that. And once I realized that, you know, I'm probably even without the distraction of my mm-hmm. exercise and sport, mm-hmm. I realized that I'm still probably wasting, you know, like my, my parents' money if mm-hmm. if I'm not enjoying it and, and I need to probably kind of take a step back and, and really figure out what I wanted to do because mm-hmm. I was listening to what a lot of other people were suggesting for right. me and that's so easy because, you know, people will always, you know, they're always trying to recommend you certain right. things and you, you know, just want to help. help yeah that's <laughs> that's right and and I really appreciated that and I, I'm one to always listen to whatever anyone says mm-hmm. so you know I'm, I'm not someone that's gonna like you know totally n- neglect anything right. that you know someone says and so there were so many things that <laughs> were running through my mind like should I do this or should I do that and and I, I just th- thought like there was an opportunity where my partner Shane had got a job up in Gladstone where okay. I currently live and um, and I took that opportunity to just I guess follow him up there mm-hmm. and um, and kind of just get a normal Monday to Friday job okay 
and really figure out what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and at that point in time, I was like, oh my God, like I have done exactly what I didn't want to do and just <laughs> totally let my family down. And oh. like, I, I, I know it sounds like, like a really sad moment, but if I never hit that moment of like, oh my God, I've just failed in life, you know? Well, but, you know, still with a nice steady job and still doing well, but yeah, in your eyes, you you That's weren't doing exactly what you were right. meant to do. And I like, I don't like quitting on things mm-hmm. and I quit on that. And okay. I was just like, oh God, like I've done exactly what I didn't want to do. And, you know, I, I think I need to kind of check myself. Mm-hmm. And even though I kind of felt like that, and I guess like every day I was probably having these conversations with Shane. It was mm-hmm. like, oh, Shane, like, oh, I'm such a failure, you know, <laughs> like just, just, you know, being emotional, right. being right. a typical female. Absolutely. Um, I, I look back at those days and I think like, oh my God, like I actually really, when I look back at that, I had no like worries or anything besides the fact of like what I wanted to do. Right. And that is actually one of the best times of my life <laughs> because like, now that I kind of will look him through my life and stuff and like, I mean, the, the stresses that comes with training and, and you know, how you're going to be performing right. for the future season and and I'm just like, whoa, I had no yeah, stress I had no problem. Then. Yeah, it was great. Um, it really puts things in perspective. It does and, and like I, I learned quite a lot from just having like, you know, those six months off of mm-hmm. doing just, just working an mm-hmm. average job and, and trying to figure out what I, what I wanted to do and that that's kind of, where I found CrossFit and where when I started realizing you know what what was you know where I was going and you know Mm -hmm. what I wanted to do and that type of thing yeah wow and so how did you eventually find it how did you start what was your first well um CrossFit so like once I left school Mm -hmm. and you know moved um with Shane up to Gladstone like I I didn't just need to, you know, I needed to start to exercise a bit more mm-hmm. and I, I needed to not just have an not ordinary job, but mm-hmm. I needed to kind of find myself again because for that year that I went back to school, like, you know, I stopped training and I stopped doing, like, being active. Yeah, so you weren't um, doing anything. Yeah, and I think that that played, a like, a lot on, like, you know, my moods mm-hmm. and my emotions and stuff. Absolutely. And kind of just brought me down a little bit in yeah. a, as a person. Um, so I, I started running again and okay. doing track and Shane's like, oh, at the time Shane was playing um, Union, which is like a f- football game okay. over, that's that's pretty big over in Australia. And uh, and he's like, I just tried this thing, like a, a cr- like mm-hmm. CrossFit. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, pff, I, don't, I don't need that. <laughs> I, can, like, I got this. I, I'm an athlete. Yeah, <laughs> like, oh, I, it's not that, like, I never ever thought that I was an athlete, but I was like, I'm fit enough for yeah. that. Like, I don't need <laughs> this CrossFit thing. And, well, it's funny because, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, it's a cult and, you right. know, just all the stuff that you hear about. It right. kind of went through my head when I very first heard about yeah. it. And uh, and I, I decided to go and I remember there was handstand push-ups actually. Oh, really? And, I, like, I'm one to, like, if someone tells me I can't do it, I'm going to do really it. You really want to do I it. And I really want to do <laughs> it. And so I left the, that class, like, that coach didn't let me do a handstand push-up. I am never going back. On my back. first day. <laughs> oh, meanwhile, you know, like, I, I mean, I could flip up onto the yeah. onto the wall, but I could never do a handstand on the ground okay. or anything like that. No way. Like, <laughs> so I, I'm pretty sure like, that coach definitely did their job properly that right. day. Um, <laughs> you just were very hard-headed about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and so basically, you know, I, that was – like I never went back for like two months. Wow. And the thing that got me to go back to CrossFit was um, I just kept running mm-hmm. that whole time was uh, the the owner of the gym. Like I kept bumping into him oh. and more frequently than not. And I was like, oh my God, this, this is, is so sign. embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> like, dude, like I, I just don't want to go back, but I don't want to tell him that. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, I'm coming in tomorrow. <laughs> like, oh God, what have I gotten myself into? And, uh, you know, like they do that free week. Oh, right. No, sorry. It was like a free day trial. So the next time I had to pay and okay. I was like, oh, how, how am I going to do this? Like, they're probably <laughs> expecting me to sign up. And right. like, so I was like, I'll sign up for a month and then I'll leave. Okay. One month. That's yeah, it. Yeah, one month and that's <laughs> it. 
And uh, and it took me like, you know, I'd be sitting in, like not sitting in the corner, but I'd be in the corner, the furthest away from the front of the class, mm-hmm. like not wanting to drop the bar or anything because, <laughs> you know, like I wasn't used to like the bumper plates right. and um, definitely a, a typical like gym slash, you know, like just running person right. that like, you know, didn't really understand the foundations of, of like squatting and mm-hmm. that because I never really had to do it. Right. So you never did any weightlifting to train for track no, or anything like no. that? No, like I mean I did like your – I did your basic strength okay. stuff but that was with more of like like cable machines and mm, stuff like okay. never no free weights or, yeah. or anything okay. like that. And, you know, I didn't mind a bit of a bicep curl but <laughs> – that was like two kilos, you know, like, yeah, I, I like never, the little one. Oh my God. Like <laughs> I just think back and like laugh, but, um, yeah. So like, you know, I guess my, my mind was really kind of, it definitely has changed compared to, sure. you know, what it was from the start. But, um, yeah. So like, I kind of steered off the conversation that your question, but um, what were you? I don't even remember. Yeah, what the even remember. Was. Well, but I'll no, just... but this is good. Let's keep going. Okay. So you, so you were in there for the first month. Yeah. And then, what happened? Well, um, I'm just trying to think, like, because I was going somewhere with this yeah. this conversation. What was my but, question? But basically, you know, that's kind of where it all started, mm-hmm. and um, and then, well, like the end of the month was coming up and mm-hmm. they wanted to know if I was renewing and I was like oh look you know I, I probably I'm not going to just to the, one of the coaches okay. and she went and dobbed on me <laughs> and was like no way like she went and told the owner <laughs> and the, and he's the type of person that makes you feel like you need to keep yeah, going or you know on. puts the guilt on you <laughs> with, without even trying like you know doing it right and I was like oh god like they've they've <laughs> they like you know me. <laughs> done it again you know and so um I made Shane come in then, like, you okay. know, with me because I was like, I'm not doing this by myself. Yeah. And uh, and so Shane started coming in and we signed up and I just – my my uh, my goal was to just keep doing it, obviously, for to help my fitness mm-hmm. and stuff, to help my running and, um, and see if, you know, I could, you know, pursue that a little bit more. So but, it's even running competitively again? Yeah, but okay. – not I like I never really had any intention to like you know go to the Olympics or anything mm-hmm. it was just more to kind of as a hobby okay and um and I went and did some tracks like you know some meets and mm-hmm. stuff um down south in the in the bigger cities mm-hmm. and uh and I just I don't know there were just was something about it and especially like with training around the track and mm-hmm. it was just something that I wasn't really enjoying as much as when I was going into the gym okay for the CrossFit gym because like there'd be, I would go in the morning mm-hmm. and I would like you know do Fran or something. Yeah. And I'd scale it. I'd have the band and everything, because like someone's told me, oh, you need a band. Yep. And so when they're not there in the afternoon, I'd come back <laughs> and I'd do, redo do it, it on RX, RXD because <laughs> I was like, they told me I couldn't do it, so I went back in and I went and did it, and just like, you know, it was it was uh, I never really told anyone like how competitive I was about right. it all but um you know it definitely was always building up and and the adrenaline that I got from the CrossFit workouts yeah. compared to my track training it was just so different and I was enjoying the the training and the intensity mm-hmm. and and the environment you know like mm-hmm. you're training with other people they might not be at your league or yep. you know your fitness level but you're still together mm-hmm. and that was really special and uh, and then then I just was like, well, if I'm not enjoying the running, I might as well just keep doing yeah. CrossFit. And I made that change, and I didn't worry about running or anything like that. And <laughs> I uh, so like they have those those competition squads, and you right. know every gym would probably have like their um you know their teams mm-hmm. that they have to go to local competitions. Well, mm-hmm. my goal was like I I didn't even know about the games. I didn't okay. know about regionals. Like I knew there was an open. Yeah. But like I just didn't care about that right. really. Um because I didn't I didn't really understand like the the procedure oh, or anything. Oh, and actually, I remember the first Open, which was in 2013, you were actually doing all the demo oh, movements. Right. And I was like, ah, oh, <laughs> she's so amazing. <laughs> you know? And like, so like when I w- went, went into the, um, when I went into the gym, mm-hmm. like I was so small and there was no definition. I, I still had like, you know, maybe 
a little bit of definition in my quads, mm-hmm. but as a runner, you're just petite. Right. You're not, you're you're, light, you don't yeah. have muscle or anything. And I just would look at your body and I'd be like, oh my God, like, <laughs> it's just so beautiful, you know? And, um, and like, so obviously I'd, I'd always be like, oh, you're the only person that I knew actually. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's it's so crazy. Funny. Hey. <laughs> and so I was like always rooting for you. Like when I was like, when I started yeah, realizing yeah, yeah. what regionals and the games were. But uh, my goal was just to get into, like, for the, the local gym that I was working out of, to ask me to be a part of their their competition, uh, their competition team. Okay. And I didn't want to ask them, though, because I, I don't know. like You, <laughs> you know, felt weird about it, yeah? Well, I felt weird or it was like, if, you know. What if was, they don't want me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my goal is for them to ask me mm-hmm. to compete for them. <laughs> and, you know, so... I could still be waiting for them to ask me, but, you know, I don't know if Shane discreetly kind of told them, hey, you need to ask her and approach her because she doesn't have the the guts to do it. But I worked so hard and yeah. it was so funny. Now that I think back to it, it's really, really funny. Just like I'd go in every day and, I'm, you know, I'd just try and impress the coaches right. just so that they would even consider me <laughs> and oh yeah it was it was lots of fun oh. but um so did they finally ask you that they did oh good they did I'm so glad oh my god <laughs> that was a smart choice it was <laughs> and it was like so much fun but I do remember like I was paired up with uh, like my very first competition it was like you know a team of six mm-hmm. and um and uh, we're kind of going off a bit of tangent here but that's okay that's okay <laughs> Um, it was a team of six and, you know, I had to pair up with a guy that I'd never, ever met before because he okay. kind of, he trained, he was really great friends with the owner. Okay. And he trained CrossFit, but not in our gym. It was like on the, um, on the gas plant that Shane was working at okay. as well. And, um, and I was partnered up with him, but he, he was like really good. And oh. I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm that good to be paired <laughs> up with him. And I, I've never met him before. <laughs> And he's and he was like so energetic, and I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna lose <laughs> so it nervous. for the team. I was so nervous, wow. and uh, it was the best experience though, because he's like, you need to go hard, and when I tell you to go, don't you dare put that bar down. And I was, I was so petrified. You're like, of okay, putting- I'll do it. <laughs> Whatever you say. Oh my god, it was it was pretty crazy, wow. and. But I, I think if I'd never had that experience or exposure, you know, yeah. I don't think I would have ever, like, as nervous and as scared as I was, I absolutely loved it. Yeah. And from that experience on, like, that kind of really took That's, me, like, you know, to the to the next stage, which was yeah. wanting to try individual mm-hmm. sport because I didn't care for it to be individual. Mm-hmm. I just was like, I just want to be in a competition, right, you know. Right, right. And um, then you caught the bug. So yeah. then that was a point where you decided, okay, maybe I'm going to sign up and do the open and well, see how far I can go. Or? I actually, I signed up on the open like my second week because that's when oh, I wow. started. When you started. Okay. Yeah. That's how much I was wow. going over oh, you. Oh my. <laughs> I'm so glad you signed up. <laughs> like, because everyone, like I'm walking in and, and like it's in the notices and they're like, you know, it's only 20 bucks and you know, you, you get to do this like competition. I was mm-hmm. like, man, I don't want to do a competition. I'm yeah. just here to get fit. Just for the but, one month. Yeah. <laughs> but they wanted to like, you know, increase their, um, their like number and yeah, participation. Okay. So I was like, sure, sign me up, you mm-hmm. know. So did that, signed up. And like they had to teach me what a snatch was because 13.1 yeah. was the snatches, snatches. and burpee um, ring touch yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. or whatever. And like, five minutes before the workout like I I wasn't even nervous because I was like well it's just another workout right everyone's nervous and I'm just like what What is is going going on on? and here I am like learning how to snatch and out the back and then all of a sudden it's like go time and at the time too like I hadn't quite caught on to like the kipping or like you know those movements that are you know you know you're trying to um be a little bit more efficient Mm -hmm. with them. So my burpees were super strict. Right. And everyone's yelling at me, snake your burpees, snake your burpees. I was like, what does that mean? You know, like I'm trying to figure out what this barbell movement is. Oh, it was just, it's awesome. But um, it was like, you know, like that was at the start. Okay, that was your first experience. Yeah. So like the the Opens experience was really cool because I think 
if if it wasn't actually for the opens, I think I probably would never have signed up for another month because of how amazing oh, the community yeah. was. Like that's so true. I mean, like you know the 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 CrossFit community in in each individual mm-hmm. box is 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 amazing. But I think that there's a real special connection that the opens brings yes. to each box that you know you you can't really. You don't get that every single day. You just you get it for those five weeks right. because everyone's in it together, and you know it's pretty special. So yeah. that first month was a part of that, mm-hmm. and um, and good timing for you to start. I think it was, yeah. yeah. And like, I guess you don't really look into it until you kind of, you know, a few years have passed, and mm-hmm. you're like, wow, you know, when people start asking you questions, you're like, man, like I didn't even realize it at the time, yeah. but that's pretty incredible. It is. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. So then you signed up again the next year, obviously, yeah. and that year you went to regionals, right? Yes. Yeah, so, okay. well, throughout that year, you know, it was all about like trying to get into the, the, competition, the competition team. team and then <laughs> and I signed up for my very first um, individual comp Okay. because I was like, well, I'm going to be going into the Open, so I might as well. And, and like a, a bunch of girls were doing it, so mm-hmm. we're all going to do it together okay. and, and like... Uh, Shane and I, we kind of trained a little bit for okay. it. So we not just did the classes, but he's like, all right, well, let, let's program some rope climbs yeah. or something. And I was like, we don't even know how to do a rope climb. <laughs> like, like, let's learn. <laughs> you know, and so we're like YouTubing it. And then there's like, you know, just just random stuff. And, and I was like so nervous for this mm-hmm. individual comp. Like, wow. It was it was incre- like it was crazy how nervous I was because I was like Shane I just don't want to come last you know <laughs> like I don't want to embarrass my like my gym and um and I actually so so the first event was um a round of Cindy and okay. then a clean and jerk and the ladder went from like forty five kilos to eighty five wow and I think my my PB at the time was like maybe 55 kilos. Okay. Maybe. I, I can't remember. Wow. Well, I was like <laughs> one of the first girls and I got to the 85 and I'm like, oh my God, like I have killed the 80 <laughs> and like the 75. Wow. And I'm like. Huge fear. I was like, I was like, what is happening? Like, you know, is, have they loaded all the weights on the bar right? <laughs> But because of the adrenaline and, like, the competition and stuff, and it was the first workout, I was like, do not stuff up. Yeah. Uh, I got the 85. Wow. And I was like, wow. (laughs) Like, I was just crazy. Like, I was over the moon. And, um, and yeah, like, it was, like, three of us that got through the whole thing. And and that's actually where my whole weightlifting thing started. No way. Yeah. Okay. So Look at that. You just PR all in one day, like, I was, 40 kilos. Oh, and my. Then. It was, like, <laughs> incredible. Like, the best moment of my yeah. life. And, um, and, and I actually, like, you know, it was a three-day competition. Okay. And, you know, I, I got my, my, like, eating, trying to get my yeah. eating right, you know, having breakfast and then, like, lunch and dinner and, like, making sure I was, like, like eating the right amount of carbs. Right. And, like, I don't normally do that. <laughs> normally for running, you just, like, you know, you carb up one, like, the night before and you're sweet you to go. Your like, and, yeah. <laughs> it was, like, it was proper serious. Yes. And uh, and I, I came first in that, that competition wow. and I was just, like, Oh my wow. god! Yeah, that, like surely that was a fluke. Have they got everything <laughs> right? And um, yeah, and that that's kind of where I was like, well, I'm not doing team anymore. Mm-hmm. Although I like I I still did like throughout 2014, right. I still did like you know your local team comps, but mm-hmm. it was all about the individual. Okay. And then that's when I started taking more notice of like I, at that time I didn't really know much about the games, mm-hmm. but I was like, I'm going to go to the regionals. Like, yeah. You know and. I said that and a lot of people were like, oh, God, like, sure, okay. yeah, <laughs> good luck. Like, <laughs> you'll be trying that for the rest of your life. Um, and, yeah, that's when the 2014 came around and, like, I tried really hard to get mm-hmm. to regionals and I did. Wow. Yeah, so that was um, – that whole experience throughout 2013 was, like, you know, I, I don't know. It just – everything kind of happened mm-hmm. at the right time in order for me to have enough time to be able to, I guess, do better because um, – so, like, strength was definitely a weakness of mine. Mm-hmm. And after that individual comp, like a, a weightlifting coach mm-hmm. that specializes in weightlifting mm-hmm. and, you know, has taken athletes to the Olympics and everything mm-hmm. for Australia um, – 
he actually approached me okay. and and um, gave me a strength program. Wow. And just like, you know, I ha- rather than squatting like once a month, right. he made me squat like, you know, three times a week and yep. stuff. And it was like my strength just obviously escalated. And that's, I reckon if it wasn't for that strength program, yeah. I wouldn't have been able to place right. decent in for regionals. So that's, that's kind of where it started. And when he approached you at that first time, was there any discussion of you thinking about going into weightlifting or well when did that happen yeah well that so went so we met up like mm-hmm. so he got my contact details and I, I was like um I'm pretty sure Shane has got the wrong person like you know <laughs> like my my technique was shocking oh my god like there was one time I've done a snatch and I've just done a lunge like you know into a lunge it's like how the hell did that just happen you know um and so, you know, like my, my, just my technique was shocking and I was really embarrassed actually to go and see him. Really? But he's like, you know, you haven't done anything and with the amount of strength and your body weight. So yeah. at the time I weighed 57 kilos. Okay. Yeah. That was, that was like, you know, a comfortable weight and, mm-hmm. and I haven't really developed, you know, like muscle or anything mm-hmm. like that. Um, and he's like, at hey, your body weight and like being able to clean and jerk 85 yeah. kilos without much experience, you know, you could potentially go to the Olympics. And wow. I was like, what? No, what? <laughs> and so it was literally that moment. Um, I think you asked the question just bef- like, you know, yeah. at the start, like, you know, how did you know what you wanted to do and yeah, stuff? Yeah. Well, it was that moment that he actually believed in me yeah. and said that, you know, that I was like, oh, I've just found I what I, I want to do. It. Yeah. But it took that long to That's be able amazing. to do it. And at the time, I didn't realize that this journey that I was going down that mm-hmm. was a hobby was eventually going to turn into something bigger. Wow. But, um, and, you know, I, I guess people can, you know, go off and, and tell you, hey, you're going to go to the Olympics mm-hmm. and stuff. But the way he said it and also like, you know, he – he really put a lot of effort into contacting me and yep. like getting me down to Brisbane to meet him mm-hmm. and, you know, showing me his gym where his other athletes train mm-hmm. out of like, and he really wanted Shane to be involved as yeah. well. Like the way it all kind of worked out, he really, it, like I, I actually, like I felt like he was, you know, true to his word. Mm-hmm. He's like, you know, he wasn't kind of right. bullshitting me in a way. Yeah. He genuinely believed in you yeah. and really thought that you could do it. Yeah. And That's he was so a powerful. stranger, yeah. like a stranger. I was like, mate, you don't even know who I am. <laughs> like, what? That's so amazing. So, like, that was incredible. And I am forever grateful for him. Mm-hmm. Like, I will, you know, I will always give him the credit for that. And I think, like, a lot of people that I've met along the journey n- since meeting him, mm-hmm. like, there, there's been a couple of people that I'll always keep a part of my life mm-hmm. purely because of those those, those type particular of interactions. Yeah. things. And, oh, it's just incredible. That's so it's, cool. And, and you can kind of tell why they're so successful as coaches mm-hmm. and athletes as well. Like, yeah, that's probably yeah. why I like being over in the, yeah. in the States. So. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. So, but at that point, even still knowing that and thinking, yeah. okay, maybe this is going to be you know, an Olympic dream, you still were going to compete in CrossFit. And so you didn't yeah. completely abandon that and focus no. on weightlifting. Why did you still think it was important to keep training? Well, if it wasn't for CrossFit, I would never have uh, picked up on the weightlifting. Okay. And and at the time, I was like, why not do both? Like, yeah. you know, who, why, why would I not want to do both? Like, because what if one thing doesn't work out mm-hmm. or I have something else to fall back on? Yep. And I mean, I, I always kind of felt like CrossFit, well, yeah, if it wasn't for CrossFit, I wouldn't have found weightlifting. Mm-hmm. And then if it wasn't for weightlifting, I don't think I would have ever been able to get to regionals right. and, and perform um, what I needed to in the open mm-hmm. to get to regionals. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I felt like it was super important to kind of do both. Yep. And also, you know, um, you, you make up these goals in your mind mm-hmm. that you kind of, if, as soon as you, you make those goals, you want to follow You're through committed. with them. And mm-hmm. that was something that like, I was like, you know what? I, I, I don't know if there's other people out there doing the same thing, mm-hmm. but I don't, I don't really care what other people are doing. 
that's something that I want to do. Mm-hmm. And so from that day on, I was like, I want to go to the, the CrossFit Games mm-hmm. and the Olympics in the same year. That's amazing. Because, uh, like, you know, it yeah. just happens to be in the same year because right. obviously, you know, the um, CrossFit Games is annual. Yeah. So And it was coming up quickly. <laughs> well, right? like, I mean, I actually, I, I didn't, well, my goal, what year is it now? 2017 so the that's right so I I was like you know I would love to do them both in the same year but realistically I think at my level Mm -hmm. I think I'll probably make the games in 2007 2020 no no yeah 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 so I was like I I know or the CrossFit games yeah in 2016 because you made it in 2015 the first time. That's right. Okay. So, so in 2014, when I when I first sat down with mm-hmm. the Shane and my yep. weightlifting coach, I was like, "All right, so the Olympics is in 2016. Mm-hmm. So that's going to give me two years to get to the CrossFit Games. Okay. And then that's when in 2015 is when I went to the CrossFit Got Games. It. So I was like, so that gives me two years to be able to do both of them. And I was like, cool, oh, you know. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Like, let's <laughs> let's just give it a go, um, because I mean, like, not for like not once did I ever think it was going to be easy to mm-hmm. get to the CrossFit Games because, like, you know, I think for people that do feel like that they could get to the CrossFit Games, mm-hmm. you know, just like that and without putting in the hard work, you know, I think it's it's a real shock, right? Um, and I did not like I knew that was that was be hard. huge, yeah. And the only people that I ever admitted that to was Miles and Shane. Mm. Uh, I never even admitted it to my family. I didn't even tell my family I was doing CrossFit. Yeah. Because I was like, I don't want them to think that I'm, you know, do like si- getting sidetracked from life and mm-hmm. a career and stuff mm-hmm. on just something, you know, fun. Right. So I was like, well, you know, let's just see how it pans out okay. and then I can kind of tell them what's going on. Right. And, um, so it wasn't until the 2015 games that I actually told them, hey, well, guys, I'm going I'm to going. the States. And <laughs> this little competition. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, but, yeah, you know, like it, it, it's crazy just how, um, man, time has flown now that yeah. I'm starting to think, think back about like it. how far away it was. But 2014 regionals was definitely an experience that I learned a lot from. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Um, I mean, at the time, I absolutely hated it. And it was like, you know, I, I wanted to quit. And yeah. I was like, I am not doing this. Like, this is not what I signed up for. Was it because of the events or how the competition went or what, well, what did you not it, like about it? Well, I think it? it was, to be quite honest, it was um, it was the comp- competitive uh, the atmosphere and the atmosphere okay. and like it was so competitive, like something that I'd never experienced mm-hmm. before. I think it was a bit of a shock mm-hmm. and... um. And then there was that uh, rope climb workout. Yeah. So like rope climbs, are, and when that was announced, I was like, "Oh God, Shane! Like, <laughs> we've only ever done this like once in our lives, and and it's legless, right? Like, you know, totally different. So different. Like, and I trained so hard for that event, yeah. and um, and when it came to the time of doing it on the floor at regionals, I I just was so excited because mm-hmm. I was like, I, I'm yeah. prepared for this. Yeah. But I got in my like I got into my own head and I just went out way too, too hot. Too fast. Oh and man. I just I like oh god, it was a horror. Oh, that was feeling. so hard to watch that workout because it's like everyone you have a plan and then the the buzzer goes off and it goes out the window. Oh my god, it was. <laughs> you think you feel good and yeah, and then I was it hits like, you. I am crushing yeah. this. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you know, you get a no rep and you've like you've just missed like I, I yeah. even swear I touched it but you know the judge said I didn't so yeah. oh my god I was getting all emotional yeah. and I still had like three uh I think it was like four rounds to go oh, wow. and I was like oh that's a lot and I'm just watching people overtake me but I went out hot yeah you went out real <laughs> I went fast out way too hard and um, oh my god you know, so like that was that was definitely an experience, and I I went I walked off crying, and I was like, I don't want to finish this competition. <laughs> and Shane's like, you have to. Yeah. <laughs> we just paid all this money to get down here. <laughs> so um, it actually took me a whole year to get over that. Really? Yeah. Like I I really I didn't like the atmosphere. That that workout really ruined me, hmm. and um, I still did it, but I actually kind of turned towards weightlifting a lot. Oh, okay. And, um, 
and actually, so that year, 2014, that's when I turned 21. Okay. And Shane, like, so Shane just was like getting so into the CrossFit and was starting to make really great friends. Mm -hmm. And, um, and he's like, let's go to the States, go to Las Vegas for your 21st (laughs) and we'll go to the CrossFit Games. And I was like, oh, the CrossFit Games, like (laughs) on it, like I just really didn't want to. Yeah. Like like I'm over this. I'm over it. I don't want to be a part of it anymore. Mm -hmm. Like I'm done. I don't mind the weightlifting. Yeah. Um, and like, and the more I did the weightlifting, I actually injured my back mm. and I was out for like four months. Like wow. I couldn't, so it was like I would had a compressed bruised bone mm. through my spine because mm-hmm. I just, I, I just went too hard. Like I was overloading my body okay. and, you know, I wasn't recovering. I was like squatting all the time and it was just cause like, you know, I guess I, I'm an impatient person. Mm-hmm. And I, I think I took my weightlifting training way too, too fast. far. Yeah. Um, yeah, and too fast. And so, um, yeah, I like I was really excited to go to the States yeah. for my for my twenty first in yeah. Las Vegas. And I was gonna be like, Okay, well I'll for that period that we're over in the States, yeah. I'll have that time off. To rest. To rest my back and stuff because obviously my, my whole goal was mm-hmm. kind of to just do the Olympics at that time. Yep. And I still kept fit with with CrossFit, but mm-hmm. nowhere near what I was trying to do just before regionals. Mm-hmm. And um, and we went there, and I was like, so so the first day, mm-hmm. um, I'd actually booked our booked the Las Vegas trip longer, okay, and it overtook the CrossFit Games, so <laughs> they had to miss out on the first day, okay. And I was like, sorry, Oops, sorry. <laughs> And that was so gutted because like, you know, we went over with a bunch of friends and um and we got to the CrossFit Games in two thousand fourteen and it was incredible. Yeah. Like that cha- I was like, Oh my god, these girls are just f- amazing. Like, you know, sitting in the crowds and like just watching human beings being able to do those workouts, mm-hmm. like the the muscle up biathlon and yeah. Oh, and like in the tennis stadium, like it was surreal. Like it was like the best thing that I'd ever seen. And yeah. I was so shocked that I enjoyed it that much. Like, wow. because I'm a, I'm typically the person that wants to be doing it, not right. watching. Right. And I absolutely loved it. I still wasn't motivated though mm-hmm. to, to actually do it myself. I okay. just was. You just appreciated oh it. Oh my yeah. God. I, pre- I just loved it. I could not believe it. And then, like, you know, watching you live, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> and to, like, you know, Camille too, like, I was just like – and obviously, you know, as the years go on, yeah. you, you you start to know more and more about the, the athletes yeah. that you start following. And I was just like, wow, like, that is incredible. And, I, you know, it was, it's actually very emotional yeah. because you just think they've obviously, you know, sacrificed so much that, you know, I, I really appreciate what they're, they're right, doing right, right now. And, um, and you know, then – we, you know, we finished that trip and, you know, I still had to like a couple of months to, you know, have off and mm-hmm. recover and, um, and I was still heavily involved in, in, in the CrossFit gym mm-hmm. that I, that I was at because that was where my friends were, you yep. know, like that kind of, um, the, that was a no brainer. Mm-hmm. So I again signed up in 2015 to the Opens. Okay. And it wasn't until 15.3 that I was like, that's where I got my mojo back. <laughs> and it was like, I finished that workout and I felt great. Yeah. I, I don't even know what my score was, but it <laughs> was nowhere near what like, you know, the world-class scores right. were. It was just, it felt good and it felt right. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right, I'm let's doing do this. it. <laughs> but I wasn't like, let's go to the regionals. Right. I was like, let's go to the CrossFit Games. <laughs> And I knew that that was a bit of a, like a long shot, <laughs> but I was like, hey, whatever, you know, yeah. and um, went to regionals and then made it to the games. And I was just like, this is the best, That's you know, incredible. I didn't realize yeah. that you really hadn't been oh. training like that for the games yeah. for that long. Like it was um, so, yeah, like once I got the all clear to be able to like, uh, I guess, you know, kind of step mm-hmm. back in. So I think it was like November. Okay. Um, so it was it was roughly around July. What was it? July, August, September, October. No, it would have been October. Okay. So November I started doing my rehab and everything. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, 
I couldn't actually do a lot of running, but okay. I could do like a lot of uh, like bike riding and stuff. Okay. And um, and then obviously you know building my squats back up and mm-hmm. and and so December and January. It, it's still like, oh my God, like mentally coming back from an injury oh, yeah. was really challenging. Um, and, you know, I'm obviously not the only person that has had to be through that, but people can relate just how hard it really oh, is yeah. because you're like, wow, I was here. Think about what you used to do. Yeah. And now I'm here. Mm-hmm. And time was running out. Like mm-hmm. time was of the essence. And and I, at that time, I, I wasn't being impatient because I wanted to get to the CrossFit Games, but I wanted to start to train for the Olympics mm-hmm. again and, and build my strength up. And so I did that. And, you know, I think, you know, just training led to like mm-hmm. one thing led to another. And by the time it was opens and, and I, oh, I like really trained hard from like January, like mid January, mm-hmm. all the way through to regionals. Mm-hmm. Like that's where. Like, I, I reckon I burnt myself out because as soon as regionals was done and yeah. I made it, I was like, oh, <laughs> God, like, it's awesome. No, I'm done, yeah. <laughs> but, well, I don't want to do it break. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I took a break. I yeah. took, like, a couple, like, a week or so off and, yeah. um, just to recharge because, yeah. like, I trained so hard, like, double days and I was like, man, I didn't sign up for this, you know. <laughs> um, but, yeah, and then, like, I was so nervous for the games, like yeah. so nervous and and like, oh, I, I can't even explain how nervous I was because I, I just didn't want to, you know, it, it costs so much money. Oh, yeah. And I was thinking like, man, Shane, Shane is sacrificing a lot for me to do this. It's mm-hmm. costing us a lot of money. And if I go over there and I come last... I'm going to be pretty gutted, you <laughs> yeah. know? So, and that was like the only thing I wanted to do, like was, was either make the, the top two Australian okay. um, team so I could go to the invitation. Right. So that was my main goal, mm-hmm. but not come last. Right. So, <laughs> the two goals. Know, like, well, that went well. <laughs> they, yeah. And like, I mean, well, rookie of the year, uh, like rookie, you, you know, yep. your rookie year. You are. You don't really have like. That's the only pressure you have because right. there's no expectations right. or anything. So like, I think that was a good thing as well, you know. Um, but like, I came third at regionals, so I was like, I just need to beat. Um, like I can't even remember, I remember if, who it like, was. I I think. Yeah, I think it was Alethea. Um, because I'm just trying to remember exactly which year. Yeah. Like, I don't want to confuse my years up. But <laughs> I was like, I just need to beat her, like, you know, so that I can Go be on the, the Australian two. team, yeah. And um, and then yeah. what were you thinking throughout the weekend of the games as you started You started moving up the leaderboard and you were doing well? Well, the, um, the, the first event was that uh, paddle board and the, the swim. Right. So and I was, was like... Good. All right, so it's swim. Mm -hmm. I can swim, Mm -hmm. but the paddleboard, I've never even really (laughs) been on that. So, you know, like you're going to have to really wing that and just go for it. And and I knew that I needed to get out pretty hard on the swim just to get ahead of people. And, you know, being like being pretty comfortable and Mm -hmm. with the ocean, Mm -hmm. like that was not a problem for Mm me. Um, I didn't really care about where I was placing or anything because, like, simply, like, I didn't care about any placings right. at all. It was just simply not to come last. <laughs> and it was obviously at the start of the, the weekend. So yeah. I knew that there was definitely time to be able to build if you didn't do well. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I just played it out and I came fourth. And I was like, oh, oh. God, <laughs> I've gone way too hot on the very first workout <laughs> and I'm going to burn out. <laughs> And like that was that was pressure for That's me. What you like thought. I was just like, oh, everyone's gonna be like, you know, oh look, we got an Aussie that's coming forth, and then boom, <laughs> she's just gonna fall off the leaderboard, you know. So the whole weekend, I was like, don't drop, don't drop, don't yeah. drop. So like. I think I might have dropped down to like sixth. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, that that's all right. But <laughs> just let, let's maybe stay in the top 20 or like, you know, the yeah. top 10. Don't drop too much or just gradually drop. So, you know, <laughs> you're slightly in the top bit. Um, and it wasn't until the last day yeah. that uh, like, you know, it kind of went, I think my worst placing was 13th. Okay. And that was after double DT. Okay. And um, 
that wasn't a very happy night. <laughs> no. Just let's put it that way. <laughs> um, and so I really wanted to prove on that. And as the weekend got through, you start to kind of, you, you, you know, you start to, all right, we're here for business. Right. And, and those those nerves that, I guess those immature nerves are kind of gone mm-hmm. and you just got to do what you got to do. Yeah. And um, I kind of, I started to, I guess I started to learn to like kind of sort, sort my shit out and <laughs> just like, you know, do what I needed to do. And it wasn't until the 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 second last workout that mm-hmm. people were like, Tia, do you realize where you're, you are? Mm-hmm. And like, I'm not one to be always on the leaderboard. Right. And I was like, oh, look, I think I might be like sixth or seventh. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, but if the points are really small, like, mm-hmm. you know, if you it's do close. this, you can, you could podium. Yeah. And I was like, no. No. <laughs> and so I was like, all right, well, I know I'm not going to podium, but <laughs> I could potentially get fifth yeah. or fourth. Top five sounds and good. The, yeah. Well, the, the, the last workout, I was fourth. Okay. And I was wrapped. I was like, the weekend can finish now <laughs> because I am so excited right now. <laughs> and, um, and like, man, I was just like, please like I was I was crying before the the last, the last workout event. because I was so nervous yeah and I was like oh my god Sam's no Kara's standing in front of me uh-huh. and you know like Kara is a machine and she is just phenomenal right yeah. and she, she her legs just will move whatever mm-hmm. And Sam Briggs is standing behind me and I'm like, holy shit. Like her (laughs) arms are like huge and like I'm never going to beat these two. And then not to mention the other athletes that are like behind and in front of them. Right. And and I was like, just don't come fifth because Mm -hmm. like that was, you know, I'd be dropping one and I would be pretty gutted if, you know, you're fourth and then then you you dropped one on the very last workout. Well, I uh, I just needed Shane. What did Shane say? He's like, um, just come in like the top two in just one of those workouts because it was like a okay. like a you know a, two a two part workout. Back, yeah. And I was like, he is asking for quite a lot right now, <laughs> but I'll do my best. And I was um yeah we we're on the line. And it was go and. I, I don't even remember anything. I was yeah. just like, oh, just, just go, go, just, you know. And it was the pegboard one mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, my God. Like, I can't get up but I want to get up. Yeah. And, you know, I got up for the first one and it was really high and I started to get clammy hands. I was like, don't fall, don't, <laughs> don't fall. fall. <laughs> and then, like, I, I couldn't even, like, remember that there was people next to me because yeah. you're so occupied with what, what was in front of you. Yeah. And then – like I was just staring at the wall because I'm like, I'm so fatigued. And if I go now, mm-hmm. I'm just going to fail. But I'm at the CrossFit game, so you just got to go. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm going up and then all of a sudden I just drop. Well, and, you know, uh, I was like, oh, I should have waited because I climbed up again for the third time. And if I'd waited, I would have gotten two reps. Yeah, yeah, but because yeah. I got up like three quarters of the way for the, the third attempt. Uh-huh. But then the buzzer was gone and I only got like one pegboard. Okay. And then it was like the assault bike and row and handstand push-up. And, mm-hmm. and I'm okay with handstand push-ups, but then it has like rowing and assault bike. I'm like, they are my weakness. So really? I don't know how I'm going to, you know, do what Shane's asked with like weaknesses right in front right. of me. And um, I, I like, you know, we went through it and finished – and I think I came like fourth or something and I was like, oh, like I could count four people in front of me. Right. And I was like, like, well, oh, I've come fifth. <laughs> Here Damn I am. It. <laughs> but I was so happy for Katrin, you yeah, know, yeah, and yeah. like, oh, it was just every every event that I started at, I was like, wow, mm-hmm. you know, this may never, ever happen again. And I'm at the CrossFit Games, mm-hmm. so I'm just so wrapped. And I'm not coming last, yeah. you know. Like, I was I, like, I made this my is goal. awesome. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I was so pleased. But I thought I'd come fifth. And um, and so I was like, all right, well, it is what it is. But, mm-hmm. you know, I, I've shocked myself for yeah. sure. And um, we're in the, we all walked into the tunnel. Mm-hmm. And someone's like, um, like Tia, do, do you know where you came? I was like, oh, I think I came fifth. I'm really happy with that. <laughs> yeah. But I was, there was a part of me that was still a little bit like down about yeah. it. Um, and I know that sounds really like, oh, God. But 
I don't know. When you're a competitor, you kind of understand, right. like, you know, that if, you know, there's just certain things that you probably wish that would have gone better. Right. And they're like, no, you came second. <laughs> and I was like, what? what? <laughs> and I just started crying. <laughs> Everyone is looking at me yeah. and I'm just like, I'm like, no, they've, they've definitely stuffed this up. Are you kidding up. me? Yeah. They've stuffed it up because everyone's looking at me as in like, who is this girl? <laughs> and like, they, surely she definitely didn't come second. <laughs> and I'm just like bawling my eyes yeah. out. And then Danae and Alethea and um, Sammy Wood, mm-hmm. like they just like covering me and just like <laughs> cheering me on. And like the boys from Australia came over and were just like picking me up and swinging wow. me around. And like everyone was just so excited from the like Aussie team. Yeah. But I never met anyone else. And so they're all just looking at us as in like, who, who is are that? These <laughs> and I'm just like crying. Like my wow. face is so red because I just could not believe it. And yeah. all I wanted to do was just go and say to Shane, oh my God, I got <laughs> second. Like, holy shit. <laughs> and, um, and I was like, man, I got to go and tell mum and dad. Yeah. Like, you know, this is pretty big. <laughs> And like they didn't like two weeks ago, they didn't even know I was know coming about here. Yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> so um, I guess that's kind of you know, and then that's when like I met you. Mm-hmm. So like you know, it, it all went really fast, yes. and like I was starstruck like the whole way through it, and you know, it was it was pretty it's a surreal. Whirlwind. Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. Well, what an incredible it was. start. That's and amazing. Like I got on that podium. And all I was thinking is, oh, my God, I'm going to have to back this up. And I was so nervous. Yeah. Like, oh. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode. I loved hearing the backstory behind Tia's early success in CrossFit and her ambition for qualifying for both the Olympics and the CrossFit Games in the same year. In part B of the podcast, we'll dive deeper into what it was like leading into those two huge events in 2016 and how she reacted to finishing second place again at the CrossFit Games in 2016. Can you think of a time when you set a goal for yourself that seemed just out of reach? How did you get there? Let me know in the comments under this post on my website, juliefouché.com. To make sure you never miss an episode and to receive exclusive content from me, head to my website, juliefouché.com, where you can subscribe to my email list. Also, don't forget to share your stories. If you or someone you know has used lifestyle to overcome a serious health challenge, please email me at info at juliefouché.com. I'll choose some of these inspiring stories to share here on the podcast in future episodes. If you like what you hear, don't forget to subscribe and consider giving the podcast a five-star rating on iTunes. Also, don't forget you can train with me by visiting beyondthewhiteboard.com slash Julie Fouché. I always love hearing your feedback, so please leave comments under this post on my website, juliefouché.com, and share your thoughts on social media with the hashtag JFHealth. Thank you again so much for listening, and I'll catch you next time on Pursuing Health. Pursuing Health.